Hi Bobcats! In this video we're going to start the last big concept of kinetics, which is mechanisms. Mechanisms are going to be step-by-step -step descriptions of how a reaction actually takes place. We're going to have this molecule collide with this other molecule in a certain way, and then after they get together and react, then maybe that thing that they formed reacts with something else, and then that gives us our final product. So mechanisms are going to be the step-by-step -step description of what the molecules are doing as a reaction takes place. Our objectives include to define and discuss reaction mechanisms, right? So mechanism is the step-by-step -step process. Uh, to write rate laws for elementary steps, uh, we'll see what an elementary step is on the next slide. And we're going to want to identify intermediates and catalysts. Um, catalysts will be in the next video, but we'll work with intermediates in this one. And then we want to see if a proposed mechanism is consistent with what experiment tells us is the rate law for a particular reaction. A mechanism is a series of steps that shows exactly how the molecules are coming together for an overall reaction to take place. So the particular reaction we're looking at is given here by this line that says overall reaction. So the net reaction is NO2 reacts with CO to give us NO and CO2. So it looks like we're simply transferring an oxygen atom from the NO2 molecule to the CO molecule. Well, that's not really how this reaction takes place. What we're proposing here for the mechanism has two steps. So the first step of this reaction has two different NO2 molecules reacting with each other to give us one of the products, right? We're getting NO, and, but we're also getting NO3. So we're actually transferring that oxygen atom from one of the NO2s to another NO2. Then that NO3 molecule in the next step, our elementary step number two, that NO3 molecule then gives the oxygen atom to the CO, resulting in an NO2 and a CO2. Now, if you take these two elementary steps and add them together, the overall reaction that we get is NO2 plus CO yields NO plus CO2. But we're showing that this transfer of the oxygen atom is a little bit more complicated, right? It's not just going from an NO2 to the CO, it's going from an NO2 to another NO2 to make NO3, and then that oxygen gets transferred from the NO3 to the CO to finally give us the CO2. So the elementary steps are the actual steps in the mechanism. So an elementary step actually shows you exactly how the molecules come together to react in individual steps. And then this question down at the bottom is asking us, what chemical is an intermediate? So an intermediate is something that gets created in one step, but then used up in a later step, so it does not appear in the overall reaction. Um, so the uh, example of the intermediate in this reaction or in this mechanism is NO3. NO3 gets made in the first step and then it gets consumed in the second step. So when we add these two reactions together, the NO3s cancel out, so it does not appear in our overall reaction. I think of intermediates as being like scaffolding. When uh, there's construction on a building, the scaffolding gets built to help all of the, the, the craftsmen um, do the, the construction, but then at um, the conclusion of the construction project, all of that scaffolding is torn down. So it gets made, but then it gets consumed. One of the vocabulary that's associated with um, reaction mechanisms is molecularity, and it basically just means how many molecules come together in an elementary step. So how many molecules come together in an elementary step? 
All right, so we can have a unimolecular reaction. That's what's shown in this first blue tab. Uh, you have AB yields A plus B. It's unimolecular because over here on the reactant side, there is just one molecule. Reactions really can't be unimolecular. Um, we often use the word apparently with unimolecular steps because um, there has to be energy transfer in the form of a collision for a reaction to take place to have enough energy to overcome the activation energy barrier. So when something appears to be unimolecular, basically what it's saying is that there's some sort of collision in there, but we don't care what the other thing is that our reactant is colliding with. It may collide with another molecule of AB, it may collide with some product molecules, it may collide with the walls of the container, it may collide with um, some other inert substance that's present. But the deal is that when that collision takes place with anything, the activation energy barrier is overcome and the reaction takes place. So we say that it's unimolecular, but there has to be some sort of a collision with something along the way. Um, the next two examples are bimolecular because there are two molecules over on the reactant side. In the, the middle blue strip, there are two molecules of A coming together, and in the bottom blue strip, there are two different molecules, an A molecule and a B. Since in both of these examples there are two molecules coming together, we call it a bimolecular reaction. It is also possible to have a ter- molecular reaction, which means that three particles are all colliding, um, but those are extremely rare because the collision frequency for a three-body collision is so low that um, it's, it's a, a very rare event and not likely to happen. So what is the molecularity of this elementary step? We have ozone reacting to give oxygen uh, oxygen gas plus atomic oxygen. Well, to determine the molecularity, we're going to look at the reactant side. On the reactant side, there's one molecule, so that means it's a unimolecular reaction. And again, that'll be apparently unimolecular. It's got to collide with something, but it's not critical to the reaction rate um, as to just what it collides with. Now we get down to the crux of the matter. We can determine the rate law for an elementary step simply from the molecularity of the elementary step. So if our elementary step is unimolecular, then it's going to be a first order um, rate law for that elementary step. Now we're not talking the overall reaction, we're talking about just a single elementary step. But if we have a bimolecular reaction, like we have in the middle example, we're going to have a second order reaction. And then in that last example, uh, where we again have a bimolecular reaction, we're going to end up with a second order rate law. But we can only do this for elementary steps. We can't look at an overall reaction and write the rate law that way. The only way we can get the rate law for an overall reaction is by doing experiments, such as using the method of initial rates or the integrated rate law approach. Use the experimental rate laws given below for each reaction to determine which reaction is most likely to occur by a mechanism which consists of a single step which is identical to the overall reaction. All right, so we are proposing that each one of these reactions follows a mechanism that is identical to the overall reaction. So if that's the case, the rate law should match the molecularity of the reaction. So take a moment, pause this video, analyze the data, and see which of these is going to be um, the correct rate expression. 
All right, hopefully you paused the video and you took a look at that. Um, in reaction A, if this, um, if this is really an elementary step, the exponent on NO2 should be a 2, and it is not. So the first one does not match. In the reaction B, um, it's bimolecular. It should have an exponent of 1 on hydrogen and an exponent of 1 on bromine, and it does not. It has a 1 half on bromine. In the third one, it should be first order in NO and first order in O2 for second order overall. So, so far that's looking good. Let's double check the last one. If the last one is an elementary step, the rate law should be NO times CO, I'm sorry, NO2 times CO, and it is not. It says NO2 squared. So the one that looks like it's an elementary step, um, the overall reaction matches um, is answer C. In a reaction that takes place in more than one step, um, in order to figure out what the rate law is for the overall reaction, we need to figure out which one of those steps is the slowest step, because the slowest step uh, limits how fast the reaction can go and thus determines the rate. So if we are looking at this particular reaction, then it's taking place um, in two steps. The, there's a first activation energy and a second activation energy. And the first activation energy is much bigger than the second one. So the first step in this example would be our rate determining step or the RDS because the bigger activation energy means a slower reaction. So step number one is slower than step number two. So we're asked to write the rate law for this mechanism and then is it consistent with the experimentally observed rate law, which is that the rate is equal to K times NO2 squared? Well, to write the rate law for a two-step reaction, we need to look at the slower step. So the first step is the slow step, the second step is the fast step, and based on that slow step, since it's an elementary step, we would say that the rate is equal to K and then times the molecularity of this step. And the, it's bimolecular in NO2, so it'll be K times NO2 squared because we have NO2 and NO2. This matches the um, experimentally observed rate law. And so there's a good chance that this mechanism is a good description of how this reaction actually takes place step by step. So can we ever prove a mechanism? Unfortunately, the answer is no. Mechanisms are theories, and theories can only be disproved by data, not proved. So um, the best that we can say is that a, pro a proposed mechanism is consistent with our experimentally um, determined results. There are two big criteria for this. Uh, the first one is that the steps in our mechanism add up to give our overall reaction, and then the, the rate law that we derive from that slowest step in the mechanism gives us um, something that matches our experimental measurements. So we have discussed reaction mechanisms. We've seen how we write rate laws for elementary steps from the molecularity of the elementary steps. And we have looked at intermediates. Those are the chemicals that are made in one step and used up in another step. Catalysts will be in the next video. And uh, we analyzed a mechanism to see if it was consistent with the experimentally determined rate law.